Ordinarily, I would park outside the store, wind down the windows and soak the blue car's interior with the smell of Hollister. It's cheaper than air fresheners. But I've arrived somewhere in the north, so I'll instead keep warm and tell you about the history of Hollister. One, two, one, two, three. Young Jake Hollister was orphaned when his father, keeper of Highland Lighthouse on Cape Cod, was apparently washed out to sea one dark and stormy night. Despite the boy's love of sand dunes and salty air, the authorities packed him off to live with his fourth cousins in Ravenswood, West Virginia. For Jake, growing up in the small Midwestern town was rather like being a puddle of water, filling a moon crater. Not really sure why he was there, but with no idea how to be anywhere else. All that changed, however, one fateful spring day at Ravenswood Middle School. Daffodils bloomed tall, yellow buses bustled kids to roll call, lemon lockers book-ended halls, canary lead pencils rolled bluntly onto the floor, and Amber, the new girl in school, breezed through the classroom door like a summer wind. All those things were yellow, J just in case you didn't notice. Fresh off the tractor from Leavenworth, Kansas, Amber was everything Jake wanted. Blonde flowing hair, uh, again with the yellow, uh, hair, hay sprinkled blue jeans, uh, hay is also yellow, and the fact that she was not a vampire like the other girls in his class. But mostly it was the blue jeans. See how it started with yellow and ended with blue? Yeah. and he couldn't believe the blue jeans sat down right next to him. Jake introduced himself, not too stutterly, and tried to shake her hand, but she shyly explained that her hands were sweaty. They, they laughed, and Jake and Amber decided to go steady, steadily out of town to escape the small town boring life, antique stores, curfews, but mostly to escape the vampires. Trains never stopped at Ravenswood Railway Station much, in fact not at all, so the couple walked down the rail to Charleston, stowawaying on a westbound freight train, nestling themselves in a carriage full of crates of Dave Abercrombie and Ezra Fitch clothing apparel. Dreaming of sand and surf, gazing up at the flickering stars through gaps in the planked carriage ceiling, and prying the crates open to try on the cool clothes all validated Jake and Amber's decision to run away. Something that contradicted their decision to run away was the dark figure that emerged from behind a crate. But after stepping into the light, she was revealed to be quite a good looking young woman with an eye patch. If not for the eye patch, or already being with Amber, Jake would have had a go for her. She introduced herself as Betty Timber, a stowaway as they were. She had boarded at Philadelphia. The three agreed to share the carriage on their ride to California. Jake and Amber reluctantly went back to sleep. Unfortunately, California Dreamin' turned to Missouri Nightmarin' as the train pulled into St. Louis Union Station. Betty woke them by dragging a rusty old anchor up the ladder and onto the carriage roof. Both Jake and Amber were too puzzled to say anything. But as the train pulled out of Union Station, Jake stuck his head out to view the peculiar sight of Betty swinging the anchor off the train. It grappled a hold of the St. Louis arch thing, violently halting the train in its tracks almost instantly. Then, the carriages were swarmed upon by pirates. Train pirates of the seven rails, to be precise. It soon became apparent to Jake that Betty Timber was their leader as she ordered the execution of the conductor and engineers. Jake slipped back into the apparel carriage and told Amber that they should stay cool and just hide. The hijacked train wasted no steam in rocketing down the rail to the train pirate's lair in Skull Rock, Nevada, the Pieces of Eight state. True to form, the pirates began stealing the freight's cargo. Seeing his chance to escape, Jake uncoupled the Abercrombie carriage. After a creeping beginning, their carriage soon picked up speed and before long they not only shot across the Californian border into Orange County but had the palm trees of Laguna Canyon in their sights, decorating the ocean horizon ahead. J 
Jake and Amber sat together on the rickety carriage roof, holding hands, thrilled that their dreams of the beach were accelerating into reality. However, little did they know that as their carriage descended the steep gorge towards Laguna Beach, the Orient Express sped upwards on the same rail. The explanation to how the Orient Express, an Istanbul to Paris travelling locomotive, came to be on the California railway system in the 20s is a long and complicated one that is best left for another time. Suffice it to say, the Abercrombie carriage was in immediate danger of colliding with the romantic European locomotive. Feeling it was time for heroics, Jake jumped onto the rear of the carriage and engaged the brake. With a touch of luck, they would slow to a crawl with enough time to dive off, avoiding a VIP tour of the Orient Express close up. For the most part, Jake's plan seemed to work, except for the pirate ship thundering into perspective on the tracks behind them. The trained pirates obviously wanted the Abercrombie and Fitch clothes badly. Not surprising considering their current rags of attire. At the prospect of being sandwiched to death between the Orient Express and a pirate ship, Jake was astonished to catch sight of an unidentified flying golden object spinning in the sky above. It was in reality the West Virginian State Capitol Dome flying from the Mayan Empire with architect Cass Gilbert and Justin Bieber on board. Nevertheless, Jake knew he could use the flying saucer object to his advantage. He grabbed the leftover anchor rope and successfully lassoed it over the dome steeple. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh no! The carriage then gracefully floated down to the earth. Lucratively, it landed in Main Beach Park and Jake and Amber turned their runaway carriage into a store, selling the Abercrombie clothes as Hollister clothes, with the important additions of seagull patches stitched over the original logo to avoid any uh, copyright confusements. The couple lived happily ever after. Amber successfully patterned seashell necklaces and Jake became the seventh beach boy. Oh, and it turns out Jake's lighthouse keeper dad used to be a train pirate, but when he tried to defect to normal society, his old crew came after him one night to Cape Cod and killed him, uh, leaving Jake, but taking his sister, his older sister Betty. Dum dum da. Oh, and finally, there are now almost 500 Hollister stores worldwide. The surf brand even now exists in the frozen north, as you can see here. of America there. Yellow school bus, kids getting off. Mm. Pretty cool. Nice farming area. I don't know exactly where we are, but it's very, very lame. Okay, it was. okay let's go somewhere else. We've got where very, very lame is later. Okay, it's a in the back of the bus though. Stopping again, can't get up to speed quite yet. 